Yeah, I believe only myself uh, is uh, from uh, Paul area and talk about the CIS for this uh, conference. So I, I would like to introduce more about Arctic climate, more background information about the Arctic climate. So Lira is my student, she's uh, he's working on the model simulation and uh, on this work. So as we know, Arctic climate system has uh, experienced the dramatic changes in recent uh, several decades. So there's uh, two phenomena. So one is uh, Arctic amplification. So the temperature increase of the Arctic uh, as a rate, for recent years, as a as rate of uh, six to seven uh, the times faster than global average. So when you look at the sea ice, uh, during recent several de during recent uh, most recent decades, the sea ice coverage has continually reached record minimum values. So the sea ice is is generally considered as indicator of a global climate change. Uh, when, look, when we look at the uh, model simulations of the sea ice, we found that there is a larger spread of, across the different models, and that there is a larger uncertainty. So the left panel shows the uh, uh, CS area anomaly, summer CS area anomaly, uh, simulated by CMIP3 models. Actually, the CMIP5 model result is quite similar. So we found uh, from this figure, we can see there is a larger spread, a larger the difference across the different model. So generally, when, when, when the community tries to reduce this spread and they try to reduce the uncertainty, so the common prior approach is to pick up a small number of models, but there has not much work done about the uh, uh, physical part, about the, uh, about the dynamics. So when we take a further look at the water cost is spread of uh, CS area. So we found uh, the, the CS sickness simulation is, uh, is even has a larger, even has larger bias. So the upper left panel shows the satellite, the uh, remote sensing data of the CS. So we can see there is a sick ice on the Canadian archipelago side. And that is a decrease towards the, the, the Eurasian side. But when we look at the different modeling, model simulation results, we can see there's a quite a larger difference. So some models show the, the, the larger sickness uh, reach the center of the Arctic. Even some models does not show any, any uh, sickness distribution across the Arctic basin. So the question is uh, uh, how CS dynamics influence the CS sickness distribution? So the Arctic Ocean is not like Arctic Sea Ice. Is, the ocean sea ice is not like lake ice or river ice, ice because there is a strong dynamic process. So that causes uh, non spatially non-uniform distribution of the sea ice thickness. This is the reason we look at the dynamic process uh, in, the, in, in the climate models. Uh, this is the experiment's design. So we use the NCURS model. So we look at the, we, we use the ocean and the sea as a coupling components, and then uh, use the atmosphere forcing data uh, to run this model as a different, uh, different, uh, for different purpose. So we first run the model for climatology simulation. That's uh, including spin up of the Arctic sea ice and the ocean. You know, ocean takes a long time to reach its uh, steady speed. It's a, this is a different from my Amsterdam model. Uh, this slide shows, uh, shows the simulation, the computational cost for different simulations. For example, if we use a CME, a CESM2 uh, for the climatological simulation, the model cost is about uh, uh, 500, uh, 450 uh, PE hours per uh, single simulation, single model year. And uh, we also conduct simulations for interannual variation because, uh, because the, the, the wind stress can change with the time. So we want to look at the, the, the time varying wind stress or time varying atmosphere forcing can uh, uh, impact on the, on the CS dynamics. Uh, from these model simulations, we, have, uh, we also have a large amount of the, the data output. 
uh, just for single simulations, for example, for climatology simulation, the data, uh, the data output is about 6.6 terabyte. And uh, for interannual simulation, so the, for one simulation, the output is about 3.9 terabyte. So our M3 forcing data has a size of 25 gigabyte. So in the simulation, we try to understand the dynamic process that include interaction between momentum of flux uh, across uh, the interface of the M sphere and the CIS. There's also internal forcing within the CIS. So we try to understand what these two process determine the CIS thickness distribution. So I know this is it's, it's better not to show the equations. So I, 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 I remove the complex CIS dynamic equation. But for, uh, for interpret uh, the explain the, these uh, two terms, uh, momentum flux across the uh, uh, M sphere and the CS interface, uh, and uh, to explain the CS internal force, at least to simple equation here. So when you look at the upper equations, that's the uh, wind stress at the surface, at the CS surface. So there is a larger uncertainty about this, uh, this momentum flux coefficient, that's a CE. So when, when we look at the CS internal force, there's a definite, that's a parameter, that's a parameter defined the energy conversion from the total energy to potential energy, CS potential energy. That's represented by CF. That means if the CS total energy is a loss, that can that loss energy can be consumed by internal friction, or if there's a region occur, that's an increase of potential energy. So the total energy loss can convert to the increase of potential energy. So in the sensitivity experiments, we try to look at the impacts of these two parameters, or to look at the, the sensitivity of the simulated CS distribution to these two parameters. So regarding the second parameter, the CF, actually there has not been much work done about that. Back to the long time ago, for example, the, in 1980s, Bill Haberle is my neighbor, colleague. He used a different, he used a number range from uh, two to 10. But when we look at the other publications, the people use a different number for their different simulation. But all of these simulation all of, okay, all of them, their simulations is mainly simply use the CS dynamics model. So they are not covered with the atmosphere, not covered with the ocean. So when we look at the NCURS model, there is a pre-described value is CF equal to 17. So this number has been commonly used for, for the community for different climatology, different climate studies. So we try to look at the what the effects of uh, different CF uh, on, on, on the CS, uh, CS simulation. So we, contact, we conducted 25 sensitivity experiments showing in this table. So we decrease the magnitude of CF. We also decrease the, 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 the magnitude of CA. That's, that means uh, the momentum flux between air, between atmosphere and the ocean. So, and then we look at the CS uh, simulation results. So the left panel shows the observed CS area and uh, simulated CS area. So red color shows uh, salary more sensing using bootstrap algorithm. The blue color shows uh, the salary more sensing data from a NASA team of, from a different algorithm. We can see from the observations that there's still bias, there's still uncertainty, right? However, when we look, when we look at the, the CS simulation, CS area simu simulation from all those sensitivity experiments, so the CS area falling between this, between range of this observation data, that means the CS, simulated CS area does not, okay, show, does not show larger difference from a CS, uh, 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 observe the CS area. So however, when we look at the CS sickness, so there's a larger difference. So the red panel shows uh, the observed uh, 
uh, observe the CS area because uh, over the Arctic Ocean, there is no uh, well established uh, observational network for CS uh, thickness observation. But however, there is a uh, submarine observations. So there are sample, there's a sampling at a different uh, location. So we calculate CS, simulated CS area in this domain, showing by color and then make a comparison. So we can see the dash line on the left hand side shows the average the CS thickness in this area. But the simulated CS thickness has a larger spread, a larger difference. Right? We try to understand why there is a larger difference. So and then we first look at the spatial distribution, spatial structure of simulated CS thickness and velocity. So we can see across different sensitivity experiments, the CS thickness distribution and the CS motion are quite different. So for example, when we look at the upper panel, so with the increase of uh, internal the CS force, there's an increase of CS thickness over the entire domain. So there is also more circulated circulation within the center of the Arctic. So we try to understand that. We did a force balance analysis. Uh, for example, we select the three sensitivity experiments. We look at how momentum flux influence force balance so we, we, when we increase the momentum of flux between air, between the atmosphere and the CS, we found that there is an increase of velocity because uh, CS gains, CS obtains more kinetic energy. So under Coriolis force, you know, when CS velocity got to increase, there's a larger Coriolis force. And then the CS motion towards to the, tend to the right hand side. So in this case, so the CS, more CS, more circulate within the center of the Arctic Ocean, and it built up a CS thickness within the, within the center of the Arctic Ocean. So if there's a smaller momentum flux, so there's a more relatively larger CS uh, export out of the Arctic Ocean to the North Atlantic Ocean through Fram Strait. And then we look at the internal force. So when we decrease the internal force, that means uh, there is also there is also decrease of energy conversion to potential energy. So there's a larger velocity increase of uh, CS velocity. So similarly, so there is a turning of the angle to the right hand side. There's more CS circulate within the center of the Arctic Ocean. So as a consequence, in this case, on the left hand side, there's more CS built up. On the, on, the, on the side of the Canadian archipelago. But on the right hand side, there's more CS circulate over the center, over the center of the Arctic Ocean, and then there's more secret ice built up over there. Okay, the CS, the, the balance of uh, momentum flux and uh, internal force is quite important. So this is a summary uh, from our sensitivity experiments. So, if there is an increase of CS strength, okay, CS internal force, or a decrease in momentum of flux, so the more CS is built up on the buffer side side and uh, uh, Canadian archipelago side, if there is a, if there is a, a, a increase the ice internal force and the decrease in momentum of flux, there is a relatively larger CS export to the North Atlantic Ocean. Uh, through Fram Street. Actually, CS thickness distribution simulation is quite uh, important because it's influence energy budget and uh, also it's influence feedback process, like for example, like uh, albedo feedback. And also CS export through Fram Street is also important for driving for over modulating the Atlantic meridian oscillation. So this is my final slide. Okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.